and we're back and we just finished watching 1988's Lady in White. A small picture that I actually remember seeing in the cinema that I just watched with my husband and kids who I think this is all your first times and yep. I think still holds up on viewing this a second time. I feel like I saw it once before on regular television and this might be my third or fourth viewing of this movie and I feel like for a 1988 movie, this still holds up. Obviously, the effects are very dated. The... Uh, I, I mean, even for 88, the, yeah. effects, the effects were pretty dodgy. I yeah. Mean, well, I think the, this the was a very small budget movie. Yeah, There's not any marquee actors in it. No. But it's still, it still mixes enough elements and has a decent script to, I think, hold your attention. Yeah, I thought the story was good. I thought that... It had like a good foundation to it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it was the, the execution of it was the best. There were there were certain parts where I was sort of like this could have been better. You've introduced this major turning point to the story, and then it sort of gets dropped for a couple of weeks, and it's it's sort of like well, what? Why is what's the holdup? Right. Why why hasn't this been solved already? I, I think the other the other interesting thing about this particular movie is that it has a mixture of different genres. You have a ghost story, you have a murder mystery, you sort of have a, a family drama and like a nostalgia piece. I, when I was watching it just now, I thought about Christmas Story, mm -hmm. even though it's very very different from that. There's I mean, maybe that. The, was it like it was Christmas Story? Was a slightly earlier time period. I this think this so. took place in the early sixties. This was nineteen sixty-two. Yeah, story is like forties. Forties, right? But it that had that small town appeal. Wait, or what is Christmas Story? That's you the one with, with the little Ralphie. Boy, Ralphie that wants the gun. He wants the, the gun for Christmas. Ah, uh, yeah. Very funny movie. Yes. That kid was stupid. <laughs> How do you shoot your own face? <laughs> it happens. It happens. Anyway. Wait, were they real bullets or rubber bullets? I don't they think they were They were BBs. Real. He had a, yeah. uh, it was a Red Ryder BB gun. Yeah. And they're like tiny little metal balls. Little tiny metal balls. We're, we're already off on our first tangent. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, Gee, what did you think of the movie? You can be honest. It was okay. It was okay. That's fine. Uh, what just made it okay? I didn't like that that black guy got... That's fine. We're... Okay. This is yeah, old, this so... Is old. Yeah, I didn't no think that that too. black guy got killed for something that he didn't do. And I don't like the sound of kids screaming, so they could have dialed that down a little bit. Like that little girl. That mm -hmm. little boy didn't know how to scream correctly, which was also annoying. Okay. Yeah, it was interesting that they did touch on, I mean, to touch on the whole racial inequality thing, even though it's sort of like a, a, a very minor, minor aspect point. of the entire story. Yeah. That they even, like, got got it there. And there was also some some language that you wouldn't expect to see. And... Right. It was very jarring when you hear the N-word yeah. yeah. by some, a child. Some, by some little some little white kid. Yeah. Just, Who's the little just... friend in Big. That's the, that's the actor. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. Rec I knew I recognized that kid's face. Yeah. But, yeah, he, <laughs> he just busts out the N-word. He's... And he also says T. Oh, I -T. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which I... Or maybe it was the other kid. I don't remember. But yeah. I mean, there's... I mean, this is 1988. There is a, a bit of language. There are some frightening scenes. Although, I don't know if this was considered a kid's movie. I don't remember. Certain, sometimes it did feel like a kid's movie, especially in... In the, the flashback. Way, the, just the way the special effects were handled. It was... I mean, it was just such a low-budget affair. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. That scene where I guess he's his life is flashing before his eyes. I heard Gracie burst out laughing when she saw those that initial effect when he's <laughs> flying through the air. But. Yeah. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Reminds me of how... <laughs> you know what? With the proper budget and a tweak to the script, <laughs> I think this you know would have been a really were. good... This, this to me, this seems like a good film that will be good, good for to a remake. remake. Absolutely, absolutely. Be... I'm surprised people haven't found. I, but I think it's because it's one of those things that people haven't really discovered it. Yeah, it, I mean, I've never heard of this movie. Yeah, and like I said, this seems like a good first draft of a of a better movie. This 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 definitely has the bones of something that could be a lot better. Okay, Olive G, what did you think of the movie? It was good. Yeah, what did it's you? It's just that I hate I hated when that lady shot that black man. Yes, I hated when that lady shot the black man as well. 
Yeah, he that... wasn't the murderer. He, he was, was not the murderer. That was unfair. But that that's that's unfair. another thing about it's... life. It's unfair. Yeah. I mean, people. He had already been tried in the in the, in the, in the, in the court, court of public, of public opinion. opinion. He was yeah. already guilty, even though. And even the even the 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 chief of police basically says it. He's like, we got you know. He's, he's the, so the chief blunt police, about Yeah, it. he's very blunt. He's like, we got a perfect scapegoat. He's black. That's yeah. like a, that's that a, was that, awful. That was a direct quote from the chief of police. Yeah, and the fault like Frankie's dad, he doesn't believe it at all. Yeah, uh, it doesn't make sense. They they just wanted to pin because the, basically the story is about a, a child, a child mur like a child murder who's been doing it for many years. Ten years, uh, right? Ten years at least. Because she died in fifty one, and oh, this yeah. opens Why up. It's nineteen sixty two. So yeah, yeah, but he's killed a lot of people, and and apparently these people have been unable to crack this case and now suddenly it's just like oh yeah we got a black guy to, to blame it on yeah you know? well the other the other awful thing about that is like the whole idea of the scapegoat instead of actually getting to justice it's like well let's just wrap this up we have a possible suspect here who fits the description and he was well, no, at the there place there wasn't even it wasn't even, or not a description. even description yeah, right right he was just there right when frankie was attacked, attacked so right. it was just like well oh it's it has gotta, to be him. gotta be this guy right Right. He's black, right? And right. and the the town like most of the town was just like well, especially the the, the victim or the parents of a former one victims, of the victims, yeah. Especially one of them, they were like they were like I curse you, I spit at you, right. and surprisingly, the guy didn't get convicted. But right, the, the jury he didn't, get, find he didn't get convicted evidence. by a court of law, but the court of public opinion had already tried him. Had already tried him, and he was executed. executed. Yeah. So that was it, it, and it's. It's interesting because in that instance, it reminded me a lot of To Kill a Mockingbird, how yes, the character yes. is just basically already guilty even before he goes to trial. And it's interesting because in To Kill a Mockingbird, allegedly he escaped and was killed. Running away. Running away. And in this thing, he, the janitor is leaving, going back to the jail to get his things to then go back home. And the mother of one of the victims is like, oh, I'm sorry that you had to go through this. And and the janitor is like, oh, thank you. That means a lot coming from you. I wish he had immediately followed up with, I'm really sorry for your loss, but it wasn't me. But she, I, I don't think she would have cared, obviously, she right? Cared. She I mean, she these, already these, had these in her were, mind. Yeah, and plus these were like a, lot of, a lot of these, 1960 plus a lot. Small town. Small town. And these I were, wanted to strangle that lady yeah and, and she was like she was like old world yeah you could I mean, tell that she this, this was like yeah, ju I justice needed to come, come I quick i yeah. didn't understand why he even rolled down that window yeah it was strange that they even let her near the car but then right. again this is in Small service to, in, ser in service, service to the story. story yeah yeah so like i said this feels like it feels like a good first draft of a better movie. I mean, it was a good movie, but I, I feel like it, it could have been made better. Yes. I think yeah. the guy who wrote it, directed it, I've never heard of him. What was his Frank name? Lo Frank Lologia. Lo Wait, can I just yeah. say something? Yes, go ahead. At the end, where like that lady, she's lightning out of her hand. Okay. Spoilers. <laughs> that, that was ridiculous. That was so fake. Well, well, again, the, this is 1988. So it was very low budget. Yeah, this it wasn't was a, so ridiculous. This wasn't a Spielberg movie. This, <laughs> this was Frank Lelogia or whatever Who his I've name never is. heard of. Never heard of him. He probably, I, I got $5 in my pocket. That yeah. was probably the special effects budget of this movie. So. Oh, he's done a lot of like campy stuff. He's done something called Can't Fear Fred? No Evil from 1981. What is oh. it? Fear No Evil. That oh. sounds vaguely familiar. Sounds vaguely familiar, yeah. Uh, let's see. He's done. Oh, actually, no. Fear No Evil 1981, Lady in White 1988, and something called Mother Video 1995 with Diane Ladd and Olympia Dukakis. Don't know what that is. He was also an actor, apparently. He was in something called Pepe. Oh, no. He was. Played Pepe in Salt and Pepe, a TV short from 1975. Fun with Dick and Jane, 1977. Uncredited Pizza Delivery Boy. <laughs> Snavely, TV movie, 1978. He paid Petro. Oh, he was in Lady in White. Guess who he was? Who? Oh. Frankie Scarlatti, adult, uncredited. So he's the novelist. Oh, that's, I was wondering why they only sh they never showed that guy's face. They only showed like a close up of his eye. Interesting, interesting. He, he also did something. Himself in there somehow. Yeah, he also did something in '88, also same year, The Wizard of Speed and Time. He played the American thug. 
2013, he didn't do anything from 88 to 2013 as an actor. H.P. Lovecraft, Two Left Arms. He plays the innkeeper. And he was the director in Nightmare Symphony, whatever that is. So, yeah, interesting. I mean, he only has two film writing credits. Fear No Evil from 81 and Lady in White in 88. I agree with you. I think the bare bones of this were interesting yeah. and I, I think it's something that could be turned into something much better, better. Yeah. yeah and especially with the fx today and just it, it definitely you know for something that was from 1988 i i feel like it had decent ambiance like you you kind of had like this creep factor it, it felt also, like a, it felt like an 80s supernatural kids movie yeah and and also i mean maybe uh, like if you deep dive into it the character who's the bad guy phil in this thing i mean we're gonna put no spoilers i mean this movie is from 88 yeah you know what i mean it's like Still, I, you know, I don't know I, I don't like giving away major sorry i've already done it so there was like that creepy scene where he's, he's with lucas Haas. His, yes it looked like he was about to kiss his cheek yeah so there's sort of like implications of more nefarious things yeah, here, right? Yeah, so, yeah. and also when you see little Frankie first sees Melissa when he's watching her murder, she's like, oh, you bought me this dress, right? And yeah, yeah it's it's clear that the murderer had obviously had a, a thing for kids and it wasn't just, I hate children, I want to murder them. It was, he was, yeah, I think he was, he, and he, yeah, there's the way he's all, oh, you're a beautiful boy. Yes. Yeah. It, it was, was very, very strange. Yeah. 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 So I mean, I feel gross. like, I feel like I agree with you. I think the bones of this, I think that's another reason why this movie stayed with me for so long because it was like, it was very unsettling mm -hmm. and us growing up in larger cities i mean you're from brooklyn i'm from brooklyn we had new york right across the river so we'd go there so we're not used to like small town life and that was yeah, another thing about this movie everybody knew each other yeah. yeah and that was another thing about this movie the setup of small town life is so nicely done like all the fall colors like you really get a feel of oh this is what it's like to live in willow point yeah in Little 1962 in october course. as you're getting ready for halloween the storefronts the candy corn yes and, and, and little train sets for christmas yes I mean, I, everything was like very like americana oh no. right so, and that's that i that's why i said to you i think at one point i turned to you i was like would you consider this american gothic yeah yeah, yeah it's interesting that, that sort of yeah exactly like americana horror yeah you know, it's 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 like that yeah it always it, it was one of those movies that always stayed with me and i always wondered i mean lucas haas went on to do you now have his own career I, I don't know i think witness came out before this but yeah, yeah the main the main character frankie is is, is lucas, lucas haas. haas and Very he young. was so good he was such a good little actor like i was thinking about him in witness that he was so good in that and he's good in this you get the sense of you, he had the as a little kid he was able to pull off the haunted look. Very yes, well. there's something in his eyes. There's something very soulful about his eyes, eyes. and contemplative. Yes, and uh, like a child like, that's like, lived more than yeah. his whereas, years. Whereas the other kids in the movie were more like, Ooh, you yeah, know, like double takes and and yeah. gaping mouths and bulging eyes you know? yeah like, yeah even the brother the gino character yeah he's kind of like stereotypical i guess teenage boy prankster yeah jerk sort of, older brother not, not, not a well he, not, he, he, he not was terribly he bad was, but... uh, he liked pulling jokes on his little brother but he wasn't an abusive jerk no he was a lot of movies you'll see the older the older sibling who's just like you know get out of the way run you know yeah yeah, kick yeah. Him out. but this kid genuinely cared about his brother you can Absolutely. see the family genuinely cared and probably because they were a close-knit family the grandmother and grandfather lived with them the mother passed away mm -hmm. so they had that tragedy to sort of bind them to be very close close right so yeah, I mean, I, I like I said, I, I always, I always wondered why this movie didn't get more of a push, even in VHS. I like, I think that's one of the times where I saw it. I think it was just sort of like a victim of the times because it was, it was a sort of scary ghost movie, murder mystery sort of thing. It was, it was sort of like didn't have that focus of being one or the other. The other, yeah. There was and, a lot and, going and, on here. And the, yeah. the ghost, the ghost aspect wasn't really anything. It was more of like a clue. It was almost like a, that was helping solve the actual mystery. And I think 
when you first hear, I mean, the title of the film is Lady in White, which is referencing the ghost mm -hmm. in the movie. But one, account, one of the ghosts. One of the ghosts. And not even the main ghost, really. <laughs> you think Melissa's the main ghost? Yeah, I guess. like, like honest, she reaches honestly, out to. Honestly, the Lady in White played such a minor, minor role. part in the whole thing. Yeah. yeah, even the even her sister played. Like, yes, even yeah. even the, the Lady in White sister was more of a pivotal role mm -hmm. than the Lady in White. So it's sort of like, why is this even named the Lady in White? Yeah. Then on top of that, the fact that I mean, it's late eighties. It's like, oh, well, let's see a scary movie. It's They're like some not. sort of slasher film. Yes, right, or right. Something. This is the era of Freddy Krueger and, 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 and Mike Myers and all that. And they want to see that. They want to see the gore. They want to see topless you know, young girls. Topless young girls <laughs> and, and 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 just stuff like that. And this is not that at all. Right. This is right. this is so this, this is, is sort this of feels like, like this, it got lost somewhere, which is unfortunate right. because I I think it really again it's not a perfect movie, but I feel like it it still stands the test of time as far as story. It, it tells an interesting, interesting story. story. I think there were maybe. He was like trying to make it a go for a little bit more of a prestige, scary sort of thing. I mean, th those types of films were coming out around that time. Sure, sure. But this wasn't. This didn't have that. I guess money behind it to to, sure. to bring it to that level. Plus, like I said, it it wasn't. You could see this guy was a a, a pretty new filmmaker. It was it was pretty uh, unpolished. Yes. Yes. And I think something, yeah, something like that is going like... to, yeah, something like that's just going to lose. It, it's it's not going to compare with the other stuff that was out there. Right, that right. I, there, I, was a, there was a ton, a ton of garbage of stuff in the eighties. Absolutely, of absolutely. But this, it just couldn't compare. And I, I, I think that's probably why it lost. Or why it's pretty much unheard of. Right yeah, now. yeah. I, it's unfortunate because it's not a bad movie. I feel like, and I agree with you. It'd be interesting to see what a remake of this particular movie yeah, I would look like. This, this, it definitely has the bones of a good story. It, and and in some more capable hands, I think it could somebody could take the story and do something with it. Yeah, I'm looking at IMDb. So apparently, the estimated budget for this was four million dollars. Four million seven hundred thousand dollars estimated. The opening weekend box office in April of 1988 for this movie was two hundred and eighty-two thousand six hundred and fifty-two dollars and six hundred and fifty-two dollars. Yeah, which is nowhere near where it needs to be. The the oh, eventual the gross in the United States was one million seven hundred and five dollars one hundred and thirty nine. Yeah, I gotta be honest. When you said four million, I was like, how? I don't know. There was nothing in this film that might be advertising, might be salaries. I, it, it didn't have a lot of special, but again, it's an independent. It feels like an independent it movie. Felt, it felt like a small independent movie. I mean, none of the actors, none of the adults. I mean, I've seen the father and other stuff. Yeah, Alex he's, Rocco. He's like one of those guys that's just always in, a thing in those things. Like, yeah. I'm pretty sure he was probably on Barney Miller or something like that. One of those old '70s shows. We I mean, you see him. You see him. It's we it's not a tangent. It's not a tangent. It's not, not a tangent. tangent. We're talking. We're still on the subject of the movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the the special effects were nothing spectacular. Especially where, for '88. I mean, stuff yeah, is. Yeah, because I mean, if you estimate, if you work for inflation or whatever, four million dollars back then is probably like a thirty million dollar movie. Now. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing in this film that would make me think it was thirty. Maybe the unless they like bought those houses and burnt them down. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe renting those cars. Yeah, I don't know. I, you know, I it's know. funny because like a movie like The Terminator came out in 1984. So this. Terminator is four years older than that. And even if you watch that now, the effects in that dated, but That's not as bad right as this. Yeah. yeah, but not as bad as this. Yeah, like this was like some really bad low, like low double budget. exposure. I don't think green screen existed, existed back then, but this is like, yeah, this is like some double exposure sort of looking stuff. Yeah. And not very well done. I mean, it's unfortunate. I, I still feel like the movie holds up to an extent, but watching it again, I would love for somebody in the present day to kind of revisit. I mean, a lot of movies get remade. I mean, we watched The Witches and they're actually redoing that movie with Anne Hathaway and I think Viola Davis. So mm -hmm. that'll be interesting to see. I, I, I'd i be curious how they would tackle this movie. Would they keep the elements of, of racism in it? Would they explore that more? Would just horror-wise, I feel like 
now you can do more with less money because with green screen things are less expensive. Although yeah, that's I mean, another the, the thing about effects could be a lot better. better right. I mean, this was the yeah. Plus they weren't really going for anything spectacular. It was pretty much just people, very translucent looking people. The the the, the scene where they they really give you like the the shot of the lady in white was just terrible. <laughs> Because it's sort of like she's wearing this gown. The flaps on the side of her gown, they're clearly being pulled up by yes, strings. Yes, yes, it, it just, I don't know what the hell was going on. <laughs> very, very that low budget. Like, very low very budget. Low. I mean, you could yeah. have done that maybe like shot some fans to make it float up and look a little bit better. But this was like taut strings pulling up the edges of her gown. Yeah, they didn't even try to hide the strings. No. It, it was yeah it, it was very was low budget low budget yeah wait that reminds me of something what does it remind you of uh when they were in the classroom that kid was pulling up that teacher's dress yeah oh, what was what was on that there? when yeah. she was like trying to duck underneath <laughs> the limbo and it wasn't like you know it's like hot teacher or anything she was like yeah. she's another one of those she's actresses one of those character that actresses that who always seen. plays like the librarian yeah or the school mom you know yeah. very tight lipped with with glasses and, yeah. a, and her hair yanked up. Yeah. Hungry for the kid's dad. <laughs> uh, that part was That's right. Out. Make sure you give your father my phone number. Tell him oh, I'm in the phone book. Tell him I'm in the phone book. Very dated reference. Yeah. Phone book. I'm, I'm my the, kids I'm must have been book. like, what? Yeah, what is a phone book? Nah, no. I I'm pretty sure what grandma it. has one. Okay. Okay. She probably has a I've basement seen it. <laughs> You've seen it? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Is it from this year? Uh, they had like a little book that had a... That we, use, we use them to prop up Christmas decorations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I guess we'll wrap this up. Scale of 1 to 10, Olive G. Oh, actually, did you have a favorite character? No. Favorite no. character or favorite part? Do you have a favorite you told, part? You told us your least favorite part. Was there anything in this film that you were just like, oh, that was pretty cool? Well, it was kind of weird when the lady in white and her daughter were, like, flying up into the sky. Sky, yeah. Yeah, they turned into, like, shooting stars. stars. And then they did that some sort ridiculous. of weird... That was ridiculous. They did some sort of weird, like, synchronized dance move in and the sky. And, it was, and it was just... <laughs> that was probably where the three million or that four million... <laughs> Uh, okay, scale of 1 to 10, Olive G, what would you give this movie? Uh, I would give it an a 7. A 7? 7, okay. okay. what about you? you G. G, did you have a... Yeah, any favorite, favorite parts? parts? No. Anything you thought was, like, super cool? Uh, no, this movie was midi... This movie was mediocre. Okay. okay. So what, but did what? it hold your attention? Not really. Yeah. Yeah, I saw you looking at your phone. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Scale of one to ten. I'm sorry. No, no. Listen. Um. Hmm. 4.5. 4.5. So less than average. Just, wow. Just a little bit less than average. What would you say? Did you have a good? Did you have a favorite part of this movie? A favorite part? Uh. I thought I thought Lucas Haas was very good in it. He is he, he excellent. A talented Again, child agreed, actor. Agreed, agreed. I mean, this was a long time ago. Uh, but he was always even like uh just like I said before, witness. But uh yeah, no, he's a he was a fantastic little actor back yeah, in the day. No, he he was good. He was good. He, he was I think if it was just if like if it was the if it was the kid from Big in the lead role, I think this would have been a way different movie. Hammier movie. Yes, yes. Yeah. Hey, I'm a yeah, hammy. Right? Hammy means like silly. You yeah, know, like boy. <laughs> I don't. So I'm scale of one to ten, hours. what would you give this movie? Uh, I'd probably give it like a six point five. Six or point. Five. Ten, you know, a six. So I'd we are going to it, it, wrap this up. I didn't we give my. Are... Have some patience, yeah. okay? You know, <laughs> listen, Minecraft's not going anywhere. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, yeah. So six. I mean, like I said, it's got the bones of. Something that could be a lot better. And it would be interesting if somebody, if like this was the type of film that got redone. It would be. I would, you know, I didn't even think of that, but since you brought it up, like now it's in my mind. I was like, I hope that there's a push for these kinds of stories. I mean, they feel like a lot of stuff gets recycled. A lot of stuff that shouldn't get recycled, like the new yeah, Overboard like, and Point Break. I don't know what or that to, was or about. Total recall. Right. Or Total Recall. Or Total Recall. That was a great movie. It was yeah, don't, ridiculous fun. Yeah, but, don't redo it. it Stop, stop, stop redoing. This is a relevant tangent. Stop yeah. being the tangent police. Yes, please. sit down. But I thought you said I was supposed to 
to do the tangent All right, we'll your, your... All right, well, we're going to wrap it up. So I, I am going to say, for the nostalgia factor, because this movie is part of my young adulthood life, I'm actually going to give it a higher grade. I'm going to give it an 8, because I think that... Best. Oh, wait, no. No, everybody else gave it much lower. I'm going to give it an 8 because I think at, at the core, it's a it's a decent story. It's a decent ghost story. Again, I like how it combined other elements like family drama, murder mystery. There's a little bit of social commentary. Not too much, but it would have been interesting to see if that could have been dealt better. Maybe better writing would have made this more because sometimes you don't even need the money. It's just a good script, right? That really propels something to that next level. Yeah, I mean, if there's somebody out there that's looking to do a project, I say go check out Lady in White. Again, yeah, I would give this an eight because again, if, like, if I think you it's, remake it, give it a more relevant title too. Yes, well, yes. I don't know why it was called Lady in White. It yeah, didn't it didn't make sense, but it was interesting, and I liked, I liked how. And also, you made up a point where, uh, like, uh, when they were gonna be reunited with each other, like, why the sister. Why wasn't the sister, sister there? there? Right, right. Because she yeah. kept the room the same. Yeah, she was the one that was sort of like keeping the torch lit, lit. I guess you could say. On this story. On this whole thing. And, yeah. And then it was just sort of like, oh, okay. Yeah, she Moving was sacrificed. On. Yeah. Yeah, it was, in, yeah. I mean, again, like you said, the, the bones of this were good. So I'm probably giving this a higher rating than it deserves. But again, just the nostalgia factor. This is a movie that stayed with me for a long time period of time and i and i liked it i think because another thing is like the feel of the movie like i said i think they really capture small town living the period the uh the art direction the set designs were all very very well done and it really i think it added to the story again the the, the script itself could have been tweaked a little bit better um uh, but lucas haas's performance definitely gives this a higher grade in my mind and again like i said this movie stayed with me i love that it opens up on halloween and that you're introduced to this kind of interesting story um, so that's it from us, and we will talk to everyone real soon. Good, Good night. night. Good night. Night.